Good morning, everybody. We are in the special forum today. Keeping your enthusiasm as young researcher. With me now, we have uh, three distinguished panels, young faces, young panels of UM. <laughs> Dr. Zari Datul Aini, Dr. Nurin Wahida, and Dr. Peter Aning. So um, I would like to start this uh, round of forum. Welcome everyone to this um, sharing session, I would say, a forum uh, for young researcher, keeping your enthusiasm as young researcher. It's not open only for young, young ones. As long as you're young at heart, this is applicable to you. So welcome, welcome all. I would like to uh, start by introducing our um, expert panels today while we wait for uh, the rest of the participants to uh, join in. Okay, Dr. Zari Datul Aini, she's a senior lecturer at the Pharmacology Department, Faculty of Medicine. So she started in 2017 after her PhD completion from the University of Sydney and the birth of her second child. She, she would like to um, stress out that uh, um, her career journey is similar to her four-year-old son's growth and progress. Yeah, Dr. Aini? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. So I think that's a really special one. 2017 uh, and uh, four years now, Dr. Zaratul Aini or Dr. Aini would, will be sharing her baby steps as a young researcher in the field of inflammation and cancer. So in her four years of journey, Dr. Aini has managed to secure multiple fundings from the university and external organizations as principal investigator as well as as co-investigator. What we would like to highlight today is um, her uh, success in securing the Cancer Research Award from MAGNA and Young Research Award from the Korean Association for Study of Intestinal Diseases. She has also been appointed as an FRGS reviewer panel at the faculty level. Okay, so um, four years, just just four years old, adik, yeah? Okay lah, tak adik sangat. <laughs> okay, and um, she has been contributing a lot in terms of research. So this is, is something we should learn from and should be very proud of. She's also a teacher at heart, passionate about mentoring students to help them discover their inner talents. As a mentor, she works collaboratively with her PhD student and they managed to secure MTSF Science and Technology Research Grant, STRG. So we will we will we will listen more from her what these grants are all about. I'm just sharing um, the highlights here and in terms of um, sharing her stories and experience, uh, Dr. Aini hopes to help ignite the lights of enthusiasm among young researchers and inspire all of us in overcoming their first challenge in career development, that is to obtain permanent ship and service confirmation. So we will listen that about that from Dr. Aini in a while. Our second panel, second speaker, Dr. Nurin Wahida, binti Muhammad Zulkifli. She's from Mechanical Engineering uh, Department, Faculty of Engineering, same faculty as mine. Um, she got her appointment as senior lecturer in two, 2015, Department of Mechanical Engineering, UM. Until now, um, she has successfully published 77 research articles in both national and international journals. Her citations, well, currently 2,084 citation, more than 2,000 citation and H index of 28. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Young researcher like uh, Dr. Nurin is able to have H index of 28. So we again, we should be really proud of our UM uh, colleagues here. She has successfully supervised uh, four PhD students, eight master students, currently supervising another four PhD and seven masters from various countries. She is involved in many grant projects while being the head of internal and external grants. She actively collaborates with other researchers in UK, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, 
and in terms of applying grant, joint research and writing paper. She's also have uh, research collaborators, including Proton, Petronas Research, Ducom, MPOB, and many other researchers from other local universities. I should mention really that she's uh, top 2%, or top 1%, top 2% uh, researcher of Malaysia, whereby all the others are males, and she's the only female glaring out there, yeah, the only flower, and I'm, I'm just so proud of that. So, um, we are very excited to listen from Dr. Nurin as well in this uh, forum. Okay, our third panel of speaker, Dr. Peter Aning Tedo, began his academic career at the University of Malaya in Department of Urban and Regional Planning, Fakultu Alam Bina, yeah, in December 2014. So you can see all of them here are less than 10 years, very much less than 10 years. He's now, Dr. Peter is now the head of Center of Malaysian Indigenous Studies and the deputy head of the University of Malaya's uh, Malaysian Population and Migration Research Center. He's also the head of the Housing and Settlement Unit at the Center for Sustainable Urban and Real Estate Research. P Dr. Peter has extensive uh, interests as an urban studies and housing scholar, which includes housing policy, governance, political economy in urban planning. And um, he has been uh, the recipient of over 20 research grants in this short time, 20 research grants from both the governments and private sectors as principal investigator and co-PI juga, yeah, Dr. P uh, Dr. Peter. So he has many, many, many achievements here. Um, a lot of uh, collaborators from all over the world, including Europe, Borneo Islands, North America, and other Oceania countries. So we are very pleased, very happy to have all three panels with us today. And we hope that this will be a good session for us all to learn from and share experience, especially in terms of challenges when it comes to um, MCO and this new normal, okay? So um, without further ado, I would like to invite uh, each and every one of the panel to give some brief introduction to let us know you as a friend. Dr. Aini, would you like to start? Uh, thank you, Dr. Aza, for this wonderful opportunity. Um, I feel very little to be here because compared uh, to the other speakers, I think I, my achievement is so little compared to them. But um, I'm very happy to be here to share my um, uh, baby steps in UM. So um, as Dr. Azah mentioned just now, I started my career in UM in 2017. And um, following that, um, when I did my PhD back in the University of Sydney, so my research was about um, airway diseases. So when I come back to UM, um, I slightly changed my interest, so it's still uh, within the same um, area, but I have to um, find a new area that was uh, that is given more attention here, so more opportunities in terms of funding, in terms of collaboration. So then that is why I uh, changed into cancer. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity for cancer research, for young researcher, um, and also there's a lot of opportunity for um, awards, uh, for collaboration within UM and also um, like at the national level on, and also international level. So, um, yeah, uh, 2017 and 2019, were the years that I uh, was in contract. So for us, um, I'm also, I think I'm sure uh, you all as well. So we started as uh, contract staff. So we have to um, uh, achieve several uh, requirements in order to get the promotion. That is where the time that I find um, it was very challenging for me because I start um, everything from scratch again. So I have now uh, an independent researcher and I am no longer um, attached to my supervisor and to all the facilities and equipments in overseas. So 
yeah, it's kind of challenging. And I start small. So my research journey in cancer start uh, with the BKP funding. So that time, we still have the BKP funding. But I think it was uh, no longer available after 2019. And from there, um, I started to have um, student. And then the student um, converted into PhD when I get my second grant, which is the faculty grant. And after that, I grew from there. So we both uh, grew from there. So we applied different grants like FRGS in 2020. And then uh, we applied for Magna for cancer research. And we then applied for uh, Tory Foundation. I am also actively involved as a collaborator with other um, faculty members and also local researchers around, um, I mean, like um, in at national level. So we have um, an MNC care grant that I co PI with Dr. Elsa, so a member of uh, in my department. And we co supervise students together. And in terms of publications. Um, I would say that my publication is still very little because this is definitely a new area that I venture. So my publication mostly um, on airway inflammation, inflammatory diseases and also colorectal cancer. And I actively um, apply for grants from um, companies, from uh, local uh, funding bodies because I think it's very the competitions are very high and we cannot really uh, choose um, any uh, grants that we want to apply we just have to grab any opportunities that comes in and what's next in my uh, career or my goals is I want to uh, do more collaborative work with different departments do interdisciplinary research and I'm also looking forward for international collaboration. And with that, I wanted to um, expand my uh, cancer research at the moment so that in future, when there's any um, opportunity for um, grant application with international institution, I would have um, a platform where I can expand my research. I think um, that's all about me. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice introduction, Dr. Aini. Thank you so much for sharing your background. Um, Dr. Nurin, as a friend, how would you like us to know you? Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Nurin, and I'm a mad Liverpool, Liverpool fan up there. Like, that's what I always wanted. I always uh, emphasize during my first meeting with everyone. <laughs> it's not related to research, but it's one of the motivation. Because I, yeah. Every opportunity that I get, I try to find opportunity to go to the conference over there so that, yeah, we can do two, two things in one time. So basically, I finished my, my uh, PhD in 2014 uh, under supervision of Professor Emeritus Dr. Mastuki Hajasan. He is my mentor, uh, yeah, my everything during for the research. So then after 2000, 15, I continue here. And then during my time in Faculty of Engineering, we have this uh, com uh, what requirement in order to get permanent, you have to have two master student completed. That was uh, our, our charade, our rules. So it's the one of the biggest hurdles for most of us in engineering because you just come back and then you just want to start to do research, you, you adapt so many things and then with that additional, you know, first in order to graduate master student, you have to have a grant. So, and then you have to have a grant to hire the student. So, and then that student might not even finish doing. So that's not different. So it's a very difficult time for everyone, I think. But as for me, I'm a bit lucky. I have this uh, Professor Masjuki Haji Hassan. He helped me a lot. So I have like a step, stepping stone. Now. So he, 
I have students right after I finish, uh, I join, I already have two master student ongoing, which completed uh, in two years. So within two years, I managed to get this uh, permanent staff. Lah. So I'm, I'm a bit lucky. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah. Because of that also, Professor Masjuki has Jason, I think uh, he has a lot of grant. During that, we have HIR during my PhD. So we collaborate among our team. We have quite a strong team there. So we are like PhD, have a full nice team. So, so then, uh, yeah, that's why I think when you see the number of publication, majority is from there and all the citation is from that project, that the HIR project. So, yeah, to be in a team is a, a give me some advantage and it helped me a lot and uh, we always support and uh, support each other. So what else? Oh yeah, my PhD, top, uh, my PhD topic is actually on the tribological properties, looking at the friction and where it's a bit uh, fundamental um, and it's hard to get published. Uh, it's only have four uh, general uh, ISI, so and it's very very tough to to get published in that fundamental journal. Uh, and then uh, Prof Majuki also he 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 advised me to shift a bit doing this biodiesel, which is uh, I think biodiesel is one of the until now is still one of the hottest topic. So every now and then there is a new discovery. So it helps me also a lot when I I'm shifting a bit in that into that direction biodiesel yeah so that's uh, so I'm I did not left that tribology field I'm still there but I'm shifting a bit so then I can move uh, much faster uh, maybe that's all uh, I want to share with you guys yeah thank you uh, Dr. Azza, you on mute. We will, we will, I, I was saying we will get more opportunity to listen more from you, especially on the mentorship. I think that's something, uh, a good lesson that we can, we can all learn from. Um, I would like to invite Dr. Peter to introduce yourself to all our new friends and old friends in the, in the teams here. Thank you, Dataza, and uh, yes. good morning, everyone, and also the panelists. Hi, I'm uh, Peter Aning from the Faculty of Bio Environment. Uh, I joined the Department of Urban and Regional Planning back in 2015. Uh, I completed my PhD in Housing Studies, majoring in Housing Studies from UM as well back in 2014. I think together with Dr. Noreen during this, this time, that time, yeah. Um, I think today I'll just share my, I would say my limited experience in doing research because it's only six years from 2015 until today. Uh, basically, my area is more focused on housing policy, housing governance and housing affordability. But uh, recently, I, not to say change, but kind of uh, look another perspective, looking into more into vulnerable communities in terms of housing. For instance, the refugees, the stateless community in terms of their housing experience. So my focus now more towards that vulnerable communities. Um, in terms of research grant, as Dr. Ansah mentioned just now, uh, I have been awarded for more, I think for more than 20 research grant, but not as a or the PI, but also co-PI. Uh, I think my journey started um, during 2015, because of the BKP grant, I would like to acknowledge the uh, Bantuan Kecil Pendidikan BKP. I keep up my my research through that project, through that grant, and then uh, the year after that, after I get after I got BKP, then I got the GC Grand Challenge Research Grant, and at the same year I got UMRG, and at the same year I also got another research grant, yeah, a Living Lab Research Grant. So it's kind of a really big grant at during the same time. So it's really challenging for me to manage all the grant being a new researcher. But uh, as Dr. Nurin mentioned just now, I really appreciate my mentor 
uh, Professor Dr. Surveyor Wan Azriyati. And also I have this uh, 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 international mentor as well, Professor J Emeritus Jake Grant. So really, I really appreciate their, their, their uh, guidance throughout my journey as academicians yeah, early, at the earlier stage. Um, what else? Uh, in terms of collaborations, I think this is very important uh, for young researchers to really establish your networking, not only with the local researcher, but also international researcher. So for me, myself, um, I really have this um, collaborations with a uh, researcher from North America, in Ta recently in Taiwan, Taiwan and also um, in Indonesia and some part of China. So because um, this researcher will give different perspective on your topic. So this definitely will help to strengthen your, your idea and how actually you can uh, write a good research proposal. So um, I'm quite lucky because, you know, I, 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 I have this mentor that, you know, really guide me how to write a good research proposal and, and how to, you know, to, to defend your idea when it comes to the proposal, uh, no, uh, 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 research grant presentations to, to, to uh, at the final stage. Yeah? Um, in terms of the supervisions, um, I would say that I'm, I'm, I'm not that lucky at the earlier stage of my career. I do not have any students for uh, almost two years. So I just recently, you know, some got, got student in, uh, in 2018. So at the moment I supervise more than dozen of students, PhD students. So suddenly everything's come, you know, at the same time. So, but yeah, but I think that's a, a really another challenge for me to, to manage the students, but some of them already go for their uh, Kerediche defend two of them, so I wish I'm very happy. Hopefully they will finish soon. And um, what else? So yeah, in terms of um, um, uh, doing research, yeah, uh, I think uh, it's important as well for you as a young researcher to to go beyond UM, go beyond a local arena. Meaning that when we write a proposal, we need to have this international perspective on the research proposal so that, you know, uh, you can actually expand your area to make it broader or, or widen your perspective. Uh, I will talk more about that later on in the next round, I guess, Dr. Azza. So I think that's all from me, just to, to, to briefly introduce of myself. Yeah. Thank you for your introduction, Dr. Peter. Um, I would like to pick up on, on uh, some of the key messages that uh, our speakers have uh, did, did have, have mentioned. They mentioned a lot about uh, saying being lucky. But I believe luck only comes to those who deserve it and work for it. Luck doesn't come, you know, bergolek. Rezeki tidak datang bergolek. There's a reason why um, fate put you. I, I could say rezeki or takdir, you know. But... There's a reason why that <clears throat> opportunity and that that um, gift from above comes to you and you, you see it as being lucky. But um, for us, for those who may not have been so much lucky like you guys, uh, I believe there's other factors there, which is um, being disciplined, having a good attitude, having the right uh, mindset and, you know, being positive about about it. So I would like to um, continue with Dr. Peter. We are in round two now. Um, maybe highlight one story about your most memorable success and how it happened. Maybe very, very, very briefly, only one that you would like to highlight and share. What is the story behind that success? One story, Dr. Peter. Yeah, okay. in terms of the story, yeah, um, I would like to actually acknowledge the Professor Emeritus Jill Kran from Dalhousie University, Halifax, Canada. So I think during that time, I know nothing about uh, international world, yeah, because someone from rural area, my hometown is located next to Kalim border Kalimantan. You need to make Prahu like eight hours before you reach my hometown, yeah. So um, yeah, so that's that's a little bit about my my. Chahut lah, you know, grow up lah. Um, so did this Professor Jikran actually? I I read a lot about her work, and then I think that I need to to talk with her. So I just try my luck. Also, 
email her and ask whether she can actually give my input for my PhD during that time. And what happened was she's invited me to that particular university to, and, and she supervised me for almost one year in Canada. So I went to Canada and uh, from that actually, um, I maintained the, 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 the networking, uh, the, the, the relationship with her. Until today, actually, she still give me a really good advice. She always like, you know, uh, whenever I want to submit my paper for publication, I will send to her to get her input first. What, you know, in terms of, of, of her comments. So then I'll, before I submit to that, to another channel. So my, my point here is that don't shy, you know, just email your, you know, your professor in your area. Maybe just try your luck. Maybe some will reply, but maybe some will not. But it's okay. Don't give up. You know, just just tell this. Uh, you know, just tell the professor that you want to to get advice or you want to collaborate in terms of joint publication, for instance, or you mind maybe you want to invite her or him uh, to give some sort of lecture in your faculty, for instance. So this is how you can start uh, to create networking with others, uh, prominent uh, uh, professor in the international arena so 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 for me don't shy just 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 try you know uh, i believe that you 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 can get that uh, to get a good mentor if you try and if you always persistent uh email to to that particular professor lah i tell them to lah yeah thank you dr peter i would love to visit your hometown naik perahu tu ya berapa jam naik perahu tu agaknya 8 jam next to kalimantan <laughs> Yeah, that's a really good experience. Yes, yeah, yeah. You miss home. Definitely, almost two years didn't go back home. Uh, because of PKP. Because yeah. Internet, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you so much. Um, Dr. Nurin, how did you get into the list of two percent? You wanna wanna top two percent or one percent top researcher of the country of Malaysia? Um, would you like to share some secret recipe with us? How um, how can we make it? Or how did you make it? Thank you, Dr. Azza. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe I just want to add the Dr. Peter punya point on uh, don't be shy, you know, mm -hmm. because we are young, so we don't have anything to lose. So you, you, yes. you just should do, you just should try. So I also did that, uh, Dr. Peter, I try to get this, but I still did not manage to get that grant, but you know, I'm, I'm asking this professor in in Japan, you know, like how to get this Taiho Tribology grant. I, I asked his opinion, then he shared. So which is good, but I still did not manage that grant. But yeah, don't be shy. It's always helpful. So to add, how did I get managed to that top 2%, I think majority I will give back to my uh, mentor, Professor Masjuki Haji Hassan. He's like, because I've been used with him, you know, I already understand what he want. He just said like, Dr. Nurin, you do, you do this, you do this. You know, he, he you, can you do this? So I think uh, I always say yes, because I know he don't like when you say no. So even I don't know how to do it, like, you know, uh, Dr. Nurin, can you do this? Uh, yes, Prof. Then I was like, that would be al always my 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 answer to him. And then at the back, I will be like, how am I going to do this? Like, you know, even he asked me during my, my PhD year to prepare a grant is one more thing, to prepare his talk, how to be a, how to be a reviewer, a good, uh, how to write a proposal grant. Even I myself is learning at the same time he asked me to do a slide presentation how to so that is the process my sometimes some of you will think like why should I do that it's not your job scope it's not but it's a process of learning I always take whatever he asked me to do is a process of learning I even uh, go with him go with him to uh, to review other uh, re uh, review paper he asked me so that is the process of learning. You learn what is the recent trend because not every one of us will have the opportunity to review uh, other people punya work. So always just don't 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 put yourself like, you know, this is additional work. I don't want to do this. This 
uh, yeah, because once you said no to one people, like, you know, can you help me on this? Uh, no, I'm busy. No, I'm, 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 I have something else to do. I have more important work. Yours is like, <laughs> so that attitude. So the second time people will we, uh, want to collaborate, want to invite you to collaborate, people will have a second thought. Should I invite him? He's, he's, he's like always say no. He's a negative people. So that would be, uh, yeah. And then this top 2%, uh, it is, uh, do a lot of review paper. I think because right now it's a PKP, you can't do much on the experimental work. You know, a review work is one of the most cited paper. If I go through my cited uh, paper also, all the top 100 citation is on the review. So not everyone have a chance, like especially we in Malaysia, we don't have that the equipment that a very technology high end, you know. So try to do a review paper, try to start with the review paper. It will help, you know, to understand not just you learn the, the area, you know, when you, you, you review you. So you also know where you should go. You understand better of the picture of your research area. So and then wait for another four five years and you'll become the top two percent. Trust me. <laughs> okay, so we we should all uh, aim for that. Thank you, Dr. Norin. Um, that's a really 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 good lesson. Review paper. I I do agree with you. Um, one of my PhD student during uh, when I was younger, <laughs> when I was younger, he insisted that he wants to do review paper. I said no need. You only need one review paper for for graduation. The rest, you, what you need is experimental work. It's okay, Dr. Azza. Even if it's not counted for my graduation, I want to do it. This is good for us, Dr. Azza. It's good for the team. Now I realize, yes, yes, I, yeah. I, I'm glad I said okay to that uh, PhD student by now. Because like you said, the citation is right up there. A review paper has a better, 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 much, much better chance to get cited. And I think uh, we should all uh, learn to do good review papers, valuable review papers. Thank you for that advice, Dr. Nurin. Um, Dr. Aini, how, uh, and what's, what's your story about your Magna grant? Is, is that what you want to highlight about uh, your, your biggest achievement? Uh, uh, I would say that would be um, not as big as compared to the other. Okay, like <laughs> Which, whichever you think is the biggest. Yeah, but um, I remember that when the pandemic hit us in 2020, so I would say that 2020 uh, was the most um, luckiest year for me because uh, we have, like for my research, we are based on wet lab. So when PKP hits us, we cannot go to the lab at all. So ex all experiments have to stop. All cell culture work have to uh, just chuck in the bin and so on. Sample collection as well cannot be uh, continued for certain experiment. So what we did in 2020 was um, uh, sit at home and we yeah. write. Mm -hmm. I'll finish it. I will. I will buy another I one. Um, write reviews and also um, we write grants. So in 2019 uh, was the opening of FRGS for the upcoming round 2020. So 2019 we wrote FRGS and then in two, uh, 2020 when PKP hits us, we continue writing grant for the one that opens in 2020, which is, uh, which was the, at that time is the Magna Tore. And there's also UMSC care uh, application for our faculty. So surprisingly, in 2020, I managed to secure all these four grants. And um, I say that it was very lucky. I don't know, maybe um, not so much applying on that, on that particular year because everyone was busy sorting out how to move on with our life with this new uh, norm. But um, when PKP hits us, at that time, we were very lost, but that's the only thing that we can do at that time, right? Because everyone was trying to adjust, like there's not much seminar or webinar being held in the very beginning. So that is the time where we really focus on the grant, 
writing, we focused on the review paper. So the review paper was affected with a very minor uh, correction. So actually, uh, we needed that break from lab work so that we can focus on other things and uh, do uh, writing in a very uh, much more focused way. Because if not, we were busy with uh, generating data and then we didn't put a lot of thought into our proposal, into refining our hypothesis, refining our methodologies. So I think a break from physical experimental work is good for us and also for our students to uh, help us um, in uh, shaping our direction for uh, the future. So yeah, 2020 was a different year from 2019 and 2019. So I'm very um, grateful for the uh, PKP opportunity because then it would um, it, it helps me to move on to my career because you know like in contract we have uh, to achieve um, at least 50k grant, um, one super, uh, supervision of postgraduate student and three publications and for confirmation you need to achieve another two publications. So in total from the year of your service until confirmation you need to achieve five papers. So that's how it helps uh, me in uh, achieving from contract to confirmation. Thank you for your sharing, Dr. Aini. Thank you. Different stories from different person, um, especially when it comes to PKP, the challenges is a completely new ball game, I must say. For some of us, maybe they, they adapt better than others, um, but I would like to open this session for um, at the chat section. Uh, I would like to invite the attendees, whoever's here, to just um, write down a short couple of words of your biggest um, challenge during PKP. We're going to address this in the next round. With that, I'm going to start with Dr. Nurin um, to share the challenges and how you overcome the challenges, particularly during this um, MCO, Movement uh, Constraint Order. Please welcome. So I, uh, don't be shy, just uh, type in a few of your most biggest challenge. Yeah, among the attendees, if you have any to share, we'll see how we can address that together throughout the session. OK, silakan Dr. Noreen. OK, thank you, Dr. Azza. Uh, my challenges as a young, young researcher, I think I, I will cover from P, before PKP until up to now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. During the PKP. I think the my biggest challenges because my research is a bit sorted out, like I have a good uh, foundation in that is to balance with the admin work, you know, mm. uh, especially we are young and super cool and can do everything. <laughs> and we would we like to attend all the seminar that uh, we we want the department to nominate to from your department to give. So you'll be the lucky one to go there. So yeah, that would be uh, yeah, and then we need someone from your department to attend this blah 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 to do this blah blah blah. It's always gonna be you because you're young and you have so much energy and bright ideas. That's why. So yeah, that one of the my biggest challenges, you know, uh, at the beginning of it, I accept all like you know because I'm the person who rarely say yes even Dr. Azhar invited me to give this sharing session also I'm like no but yeah she's she like no okay 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 I'll, I'll do it I'll do the sharing session so yeah so and then at until to the one extent I can't really uh, manage it so yeah that would be the challenges I start sorting out everything which is I can do and which is I can try to help and ask from my friends. So that would be how I manage my admin work, you know. And then and and some of it because I sometimes I like to do at the end because of the thrill of it. So now I I, I I'm not that young, so I less of thrill. So I do it a bit early. So before what I can do, try to have some exam question 
the, in the question bank and then I have all the tutorials sorted out a bit. So it's not that adventurous right now. And then also balance work life also another challenges. You as a young researcher, uh, you have to balance between your friends, your family and your research. So to, to, to juggle, you, you're still young as a mom also or or friends or you know everything is everything is new but but it's okay because you're young and you can do all these stupid things all do these mistakes there is nothing wrong about that because very young mm. so and then um, yeah to have to balance make sure you guys don't carry your works at home especially when you have kids you know do try to manage and keep it everything between eight to five try to finish it, uh, not to extend because uh, your kids need that, you know, is 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 a bit unfair. I always uh, I think one of my mentor, uh, late Professor Sharifah B, he said she says I always look up at her, you know, she's always the one that have energy and you know, but uh, he said to me personally, like, you know, he missed that because she worked very hard for her research, for her career work, but he did not uh, look. I'm not saying he did not look. He, he, she said that she, she missed the child growing to see the, the kids growing up. So, so yeah, uh, she, she always remind me to have that uh, balanced work life. It, it, it's not just for your kids, it's for you, for you too. So because you can't go back like, you know, when you settle down everything like, hey, I want to see my kids drawing like, no, your kids not going to talk to you anymore that time. And then another challenge, my mentor left me in 2019 to UIA. So I'm the one who already been used to all these uh, being things sort, sort out, what to do, what to apply, what to. Suddenly in 2019, he left like. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit lost during that time because he sees guide me from far away. So it's like, oh no, I have honeymoon for one year. <laughs> like I didn't do anything. It's like holiday. That's what I want. This is a freedom. <laughs> but don't do this, guys. <laughs> and then 2020, I just start pull back everything, try to look, yeah, to sort it. But yeah, it, it, it's a bit difficult for me. Uh, that would be my another challenges to 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 start as on your own. And but the good thing is the foundation is there, so it's not going to run. It's not going to divert so far. So you you know your you have your student. You have to do this. You have to do that. So yeah, but I have like one year of holiday. <laughs> and then the next one is on the. A limited grant, you know, as you're a young researcher, you want to apply. Oh, no, this grant is not for you. No, this grant is not for you. This grant is for the one, you know. But don't be afraid. Try to propose to your senior, like, you know, I have this topic. Could you be my collaborator? Would you like to be in my team? You will be the uh, PI. It is not about, uh, sometimes you like, you're doing all this donkey work, but someone get an knowledge. But it's not about that. When you do that, it's all for you. Everything will go back for you. Trust me. You will not do that uh, without Cecilia. Uh, so, so that is how you have to overcome these uh, uh, challenges, lah. But now I'm a bit, what I call uh, the drain code. We, I'm, I'm also already drained. Keep on applying and not getting any of the grant. But yeah. You just, I, I, what I do now, I try to talk to someone else. Like I, I, I told him, I told uh, my dear sir, I'm facing this one. What do you think? Like he said, no. So he give more idea feedback that will help you to improve your, your, your proposal. So that is how I'm tackling my uh, challenges right now. And yeah this COVID-19 because we are, I'm, I'm an experimental person. I can't, I can't do work. I'm, I'm not good doing work in front of computer. So 
when we can't do experiment, I'm like, okay, what should I do now? We can't do go to lab. Uh, we have a limited resources. We can't do that. We can't. There is so much you can't do. But then I sit back with my team, like, hey, uh, what we can do now? Do, stop saying what we can we we can do. So what we can do? So we start to do the review paper. I start have meeting with my student. We discussing on, okay, we do this uh, proposal. We just, we don't really know if there is opening, but we have a sample of, okay, if you want to do in the lubricant this, in the biodiesel this. So we have a bit of uh, uh, preparing on that. So once there is opening, it is much easier for us. And yes, doing, yeah, that would be COVID-19. Uh, challenges for me and also stay at home with kids uh, is always additional like mom no no kids I'm, I'm in the middle there's always like that luckily today I can uh, stay <laughs> in the office so you guys will not listen for me saying something like no like nah <laughs> so, yeah here I am so that would be uh, some of my challenges I think uh, others will adding more on this Thank you, Dr. Nurin. So <laughs> we have we have some we have some um, input from the participants here from Dr. Muhammad Afiq, Dr. Muhammad Farid Nazir, and Dr. Siti Zaleha on the their biggest challenge. If any of the panel would like to pick up this um, um, comments or this this um, issues, you're more than welcome to rejection in terms of publication and grant application and how to get uh, how to start getting students and what to do when your niche area is not the topic of interest for the grant should you change your topic to cater them so we can address it um throughout the session if any of the panels would like to pick that up i would like to um invite dr peter or dr aini when it comes to um challenges uh unmute okay. right. Sorry, sorry. My PC is too slow to you me. <laughs> All right, in terms of challenges, uh, I think PKP, yeah, I will start talk about the COVID-19. Dr. Norino recovered a lot prior to COVID-19, which I think every one of us uh, having this similar issue in terms of admin work, we already stressed to the maximum, right? I believe on that. And, and also, um, you know, uh, uh, work-life balance so important but I would like to really emphasize on during the PKP for me PKP I really enjoy working at home I'm very productive at home actually because you know being someone who's staying in Puchong I no need to redact jam for like one hour one and a half hour every morning so this is not something that I only feel yeah, about the, the productive work during PKP, but also the output speaks itself huh, during the PKP in terms of publications. Uh, I think this year alone and last year, uh, I published quite a number of publications because you know you, you have extra time to write when you're working at home. So for me, working at home, but of course you need to really balance. Lah, yeah, don't work from you know 24 hours a day. Uh, you need to do whatever you like, you know, like, like me, myself, I always, when I'm writing, I always open, my, you know, uh, play with my cats. I have three cats, I don't really know that, right? Even though I'm single, no, no kids, but I have cats. Eh? Um, and, um, but in terms of data collections, eh, during the PKP, this is something that very um, uh, ch challenges for us so from social science uh, discipline. Because we need to talk with people, we need to go to the field work to do data collection to distribute the survey in questionnaire. For the for, for, for the first six months of the PKP last year, uh, the research was kind of like put on hold first, and then the second phase on the next six months. Then I I I started to think that this is can't be happening, right? Because I cannot stop or cannot pause my my research. Yeah, I need to to continue my research. So what I did was. Uh, I contacted um, local community in Sabah because most of my project are located in Sabah and Sarawak for the case study because I'm looking for the stateless community, right? Those very vulnerable communities. So I contacted the the the, the um, local community to help me with the survey, 
And sometimes actually we do this uh, FaceTime with local community when they distribute the survey. So I can see the body language of the respondent because as a social science researcher, we need to know how the respondent react to the question as well, right? Because I'm pretty much on the qualitative researcher, not only try to get the answer through the survey, but you need to know to understand how they respond. What's their impressions when you look at into the questions? So that's very important. And the tip that I can give here for those who are from social science when you do data collection, maybe you can try to revise the number of respondents. Like my one of my research actually in Sabah, the original sample is 1000 plus. But after discuss with my funder, then I reduced to 800 and still within the acceptable limit of the uh, research methodology. So, so this is the thing, be more creative when it comes to uh, research during this PKP, right? And of course you can work in silo, make sure you have the, your counterpart, your co-researcher also working together with you during this PKP. Do not working alone. Eh? My advice is do not work in silo. You know, you, have, you need to have your support system Meaning support system is not only come from the University of Malaya itself, but it also come from yourself. Meaning that you have friends, you have co-researcher, somebody that you're comfortable to talk with about your research. And you need someone who actually um, is not within your field that can get input, that can advise you about the project you want to do. Right? Especially during this PKP, it's not an easy, I know, it's very hard to do research during this PKP, especially for social science. I think maybe maybe also science-based, maybe you need to go to the lab, kan? but it's so close. But ours is because we need, really need to engage with the community, we need to talk with the community leaders. So it's a really huge challenge for us, but be more creative in terms of your research methodological design. Revise it if necessary, but of course you need to get consent from the funder. Right, everything need to go back to the funder. Do not simply change your TOR in your research project. Otherwise, you'll get in trouble later on. You need to have this black and white, yeah? email them saying what's your difficulty, what's the challenges. This is what I'm telling you in here is that don't shy again, don't shy. Yeah, just ask the funder, can or not. Nothing lose. If they kata tak boleh, then tak boleh lah. Right, then you proceed whatever that you plan to them. Right, so that is my advice during the PKP. But, but Try to get your own time, lah, your own time, meaning that, you know, maybe during the PKP time, what is the thing that you, the, 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 the thing that you, you love, love the most, maybe cooking, ke writing, ke whatever, lah, eh? uh, for me, playing with my cats, will already make me happy, so, so that, that's my soft spot when working at home, right? So I think that's all, uh, pro, uh, Dr. Azhar, we interrupt later on if there is anything okay, that Okay, thank you so do. much. Dr. Aini, nak tambah apa-apa? Uh, just some uh, uh, things that I wanted to address, uh, like like say, um, one of the challenges for our for us for new lecturer is to get a uh, student right. This is from Dr. Farid. Okay, so um, yes, uh, I found that uh, this is uh, quite. Uh, I mean, like it's a big challenge for me as well last time, because uh, when you apply grant, for instance, BKP, Magna, some of these grant doesn't have enough allocation to hire RA or GRA, right? But our KPI requires us to have uh, supervision of a master student or PhD. So it's very hard to achieve this because. Uh, with limited findings, uh, often the money that we offer is not attractive to the student. Uh, they are looking for a project that can offer them GRA money or at least some stipend to cover for their uh, transportation or also for the um, renting if they are renting an apartment uh, close by. So. Um, what I did last time, uh, so this is just a sharing. So when 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 you encounter this situation, but you need to deliver the KPI of the grant, um, you have to find a really good student that uh, have uh, interest in research. So it will be uh, a bit longer time compared to the rest of your friends when they uh, get student. But once you identify this candidate, um, it's actually going to be very um, um, helpful and because the candidate uh, has a real interest in the project and when you polish them, uh, you um, as in like you guide them uh, very well, 
uh, you'll be surprised of what they can do. So that is my um, uh, experience um, in getting students with these limited findings, especially for Magna. It doesn't have any allocation for um, um, RE. As well, uh, same as Tori. So along the way, there will be other opportunities of grant. So that is where you expand your research. So you use the initial grant to have some uh, fun, uh, data, which you can later expand and apply grants together with your student. OK, and um, another challenges uh, here, uh, Siti Zaliha said that what to do when your niche area is not the topic of interest for grants? Should you change your topic to cater them? So this is actually what I experienced when I first started. So I don't know where to start. I don't know um, how to start because um, I'm totally in a new place um, and I don't have the same facility and equipment as before. Because previously uh, in my PhD, I worked with um, human primary AV epithelial cells that I dissected from the human lung. So we collected human lung from different hospitals around Sydney. And then we have a special um, um, uh, equipment, like the system has been established. So in order for me to do this in just one year, it seems very impossible because um, in terms of funding as well, because when you culture primary cells, you need a lot of money because they need special media and so on. So this is where you have to be creative. Uh, you have to try to find a point where your interest and the area that being highlighted in your country or in your institution, where it meets and try to connect them together. So it may take a, some time, but one, once you find this, uh, you will be able to uh, build your foundation slowly and expand from there. That's a good advice. <clears throat> so the key is for us to be adaptable, yeah? Yeah. Adaptable enough, but not to lose ourselves at the same yeah. time. That's find true. Find our strength, find our strength, our core strength and that we can contribute. But at the same time, slip, you know, find places where you can fit in. And I believe that word niche is very is very important because you are try as a researcher. This is what um, I will always preach to young researcher. As a researcher, you are building yourself as a rock star in your field. Yeah, rock star, you know, rock star, you know, rock star. You are building yourself as a rock star. So you want, like Taylor Swift, if he if she has been singing. Someone else's song all the while, she will not be a rock star. At Sheeran, like Sapa, I don't know. <laughs> For you to become a rock star, you have to find your true self, but at the same time, fit it with what people want and pe what people need. I think that's that's a that's a hard balance to do, but once you get the hang of it, I think you'll be okay. Once people know you and then you you know, um you build your profile bit by bit from there um, um what uh people say success breeds success so go for the small success go for the small success like um dr aini dr peter dr nurin how i come across their names is from the small success that they have cumulatively built bit by bit i know as young researcher we always have um the impression that we are being quote unquote bullied <laughs> into into doing things because we are young yeah you know? uh we don't we, we 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 are not in the position to to say no and because we are, we are new so i i believe a lot of us um, have gone through that stage but um these are in um examples in front of you who managed to you know uh, swing through it admin work admin work but still research you know your priority is there so uh, i would like to um if, if there's any more uh, comments or um challenges that the audience would like to bring up feel free to chat uh, put it in the chat section i would like to go to our yes uh, let me, uh, yes i think uh one another thing that i find that is uh, uh challenging for us uh, when especially when i first started is the contract status Mm. So actually, it kind of bothered me a lot because um, um, 
like for certain grant when you uh, apply so the contract status limits your um, capability in uh, applying the grant so um, I mean like in terms of eligibility so for instance when I when I like so motivated in 2019 I wanted to apply for the FRGS and then I went to the talk I went to the workshop suddenly they have this new guidelines that if you have your uh, contract uh, balance uh, less than a year you are not able to apply I was very frustrated because I have my proposal ready half cooked already so it has been refined refined so many times so I then uh, find ways how to actually um, do this. So I seek advice from uh, everyone, like in faculty from RMC, and you have to be uh, proactive in terms of this. Like uh, you have to find ways on how actually you can submit your proposal. Actually, when you you try to find this out, there's always ways. So at that time, uh, with the uh, new guidelines um, that they require the contract staff to have at least uh, one year or more in order to become a PI. So what I did last time is I uh, contacted my uh, HOD and RMC and we applied, uh, I managed to apply for the grant with a support letter from HOD. So basically, the contract status is not a problem. You are you have the same privilege as others you just have to find ways talk to people and try to find uh, a solution for your pro uh, problem don't just sit there and nangis because <laughs> like, <laughs> like you cannot apply but just try your best and the other thing is that uh, um, the all the kpis it kind of bother you like okay when will i ever achieve this this is so hard to achieve but trust me if you do one step at a time, it's all coming together at the end. Okay, thank you. Very nicely put. Yeah, when it comes to um, challenges, we shouldn't succumb to it. Yeah, just find your way. You will find a way. And if people see that you have you have that potential, people will be willing to help you. You know, and if you don't show the attitude in other terms, in like, like Dr. Nurin uh, nicely put it just now, in terms of admin work, if you keep saying, nah, tak nak, mm, no. So when it comes to you asking for help, they may have that, you know, it's a mirror. What you're looking at is a mirror. People will treat you the way you treat them. So if you want to be treated nicely, you treat people nicely, but it has to be um, dua hala lah. It has to be uh, um, reciprocal, yeah? So it's a mirror. Um, let's... Uh, move to the next round which is uh sharing tips and advice i would like to start with dr aini for the tips and advice um opening i might say <laughs> okay thank you i i saw uh, dr peter nodin <laughs> <laughs> okay because you have a slide so we are waiting for that <laughs> So, okay, uh, let me just share my stream. So I prepared some points that I wanted to highlight and share. So hopefully uh, it will be useful for you all, um, especially the new ones that just started. They are still in contract status waiting for confirmation sheet. Okay, so I'll just share my screen. In the meantime, while Dr. Aini is sharing her screen, I would like to read uh, Dr. Farid. Contracts are yearly, but grants require contract balance to be at least a year. Yeah, kind of a balance uh, problem with the system. That's what Dr. Aini uh, tried to address just now. So uh, can you all see my screen? Um, it is not on uh, screen slide mode yet. Oh, really? Uh, it's still in PowerPoint. Because it's already on screen sharing mode. Let me just um, and share and share again, perhaps. I welcome um, any other comments or input from the floor, yeah? if you have any um, points you want to bring up throughout the session, you don't have to wait until the Q&A session at the end. Feel free to just type it in. So, uh, window. Right. Can you see now? Yes, we okay. can see tips and advice for young researchers. Uh, 
Okay, um, so the first tips and advice that I find, um, I mean like to myself actually, it's okay to start small, but you need to think big and build over time. So it's okay to have um, uh, a, a grant as a co-PI. It's okay to just collaborate with department members. It's okay to just supervise final year student because you need to gain some experience in supervision as well. And it's okay to become a co-author and not yet a corresponding author. Okay, so you start small, but you expand from there. And then I find that um, you need to reach out, you need to stay active and stay connected to the scientific community. When I first started, I found that uh, UM Expert is a, actually a very useful directory for me. So I use it uh, to contact researchers within UM to exchange resources, to exchange protocol. So let's say if I need a colorectal cancer cell line, so I type in inside the directory and say, um, let's say colorectal cancer cell line, and then there's a few publication that's come up uh, with a UM um, professor or associate professor. So I then contacted them to exchange for resources. And then there's also free trials from companies. So just reach out and then contact the corresponding authors for the paper that you read to share protocol, to share resources. And most importantly, uh, when we did our PhD last time, we always uh, go for conference. We just want to present our work and then that's it, right? Um, I don't know about you all, but this is what I did. I was like, okay, I just present, okay, then my work is done. But now, this is the time where you have to approach the speakers. So when you approach the speakers, this is where you establish um, your relationship and collaboration with them. So this is where uh, I get to know colorectal surgeon, pathologies for our sample collection, and also geneticists to do knockout cell line for my uh, PhD student experiment. And then uh, uh, subscribe to Society News Research and Trainership Portal because for us as a young researcher, actually there's a lot of opportunities out there for awards, for grant application. Recently, I have just um, applied for the um, bursary assistant program for the European uh, Association of Cancer Research, which um, support me for the um, uh, conference fees and also one year membership of their society. So do subscribe. Sometimes we think that oh, this would be a lot of spam in our main box, but there's a, a good opportunity lies in there. And then of course, be proactive about grants. So I have this little book where I doodle my idea. So it helps me to keep refining my hypothesis and keep me focused about my work. And then be alert and mark your calendar for upcoming grants. So for instance, let's say for us, there's a, a grant, early career return grant, so ICGEB. So let's say it opens last year in March or April. So you mark your calendar for next year. So maybe you are not, a, um, I mean like that sempat nak apply last time. So you apply for next year. And of course, attend Grand Clinic's workshop held by your faculties by RPPP because this is really important because uh, when you go to the talk, you know what is the new guideline, what is the new uh, requirement criteria. Um, that allow you to uh, tailor your grant meeting the requirements because you don't want your grant to be rejected because of technical issues. It's sort of like waste of energy and waste of time because it is not rejected because um, the methodologies and so on, but it gets rejected because of technical issues. And I think this is also important to stop researchers. So, not only stalk uh, people on Facebook or Instagram, so you have to stalk researchers because um, from here you can actually uh, look at the title, uh, the title of research, and for instance, um, if you go to uh, Magna Tore website, from there you can also learn um, how much the funding organization actually give you or give the previous recipient and you can tailor your proposal according to that amount of money. Because sometimes uh, they, they 
mentioned about like up to 60k but in the actual um previous recipient they didn't really give up to 60k maybe 20k maybe 30k so from here you get an extra information how you can tailor your grant so this is also important for stocking the researchers and then mentoring matters because i think um when i said just now about student um the money that we have is not attractive to them so you have to offer them something else so you offer them first-hand knowledge or directly teach the student when we are still um uh, junior we are not really i mean like we still have the time to go to the lab so every now and then just try to go um because this actually motivates and encourage them to do their work and when they get motivated we get motivated back so it's like a yes. dual uh vibe okay right um i think the most important thing among all is to form a strong support system and also to celebrate your success so celebration is really important because it keeps you going you celebrate with your important people uh, your family people that support you emotionally and mentally and of course your research team but the key point is celebration is very important and the last one is um uh, if you can be anything in the world just be kind be helpful be resourceful and be supportive uh, to your colleagues because especially the juniors they really need them because uh, when they first started their work it's a kind of whole new environment for them and um, I think that's all so I just want to share with you so this is my research group so this is where uh, the, my first student, so I co-supervised the student. She's now completed uh, her PhD. And then this is my PhD student. He's, he's in his third year. And then I have new uh, two postgraduate students. So yeah, this is my little family. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Aini. We can really get emotional when we when it comes to family and connections. Yeah, yeah? especially when when you talk about um uh, kids, you know, working from home. Even even anak anak bulus pun dikira anak juga lah, Dr. Peter kan? <laughs> anak anak bulus. Yeah. So working from home is 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 one thing. Um, but our extended family, our research group, I do agree with you very very much. People will say, okay, don't 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 catch me here. Um, uh, lab Dr. Azza selalu buat makan-makan. <laughs> okay, censored. <laughs> so yeah, I do believe in celebration. I do believe in 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 that 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 family vibe that you know that uh, supporting each other. So that like Dr. Aini said, if you don't um if you can't offer monetary um gains in terms of the salary, I mean not big enough. What you can offer is hands-on help, the, the, the first-hand um, first aid kit, you know, the the, the 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 support system and you know the the connection between um, all of them. Yes, um, I I can see a lot of comments here. Uh, already picking your mentors here and there, Dr. Nurin, Dr. Peter. Dah boleh nampak dah siapa bakal-bakal <laughs> mentor. I do, um, I I would like to um, carry on from Dr. Nurin and Dr. Peter's point about having a mentor. Some of us may not naturally have that mentor. Some of us may not. And I do see a trend in University of Malaya that uh, mentorship is not, maybe some of us don't have that um, natural mentorship opportunity. But we do have this colleague. So um like your your layer, your same, you 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 become lecturer at around the same time and then you apply grants together. So this can also be seen as a um not mentorship like what we understand, but um a group of people where when we climb, we climb together. This support system. So we we understand each other's challenge and uh, we learn from each other, but we are the same age or from the same um, batch.
So that's this can also be leveraged upon if you if some of you out there may feel, oh no, you know, aku, aku tak ada aku tak ada mentor, you know, aku tak ada mentor sedih. <laughs> but um, if you look around you, the office in front of you, next to you, next to you, people who graduated uh, around the same time with you are in the department together with you, even from across the faculty, not not from the same faculty, can also be quote unquote mentor, but in the same in, in a different sense. So uh, the point here is uh, that that connection, that support system, that guidance, you know, so some of you may be better at something else and your friend might be better at something else and we join power. It's like power rangers. It's not necessarily having a, a Yoda and, and the, the Anakin. I don't know how to put this, but yeah, it's it's, it's the same. Wash. Star Wars. <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm too old for all this. Yes, Dr. Nurin, I think this is your your flaw. You would like to continue, Dr. Nurin? Any other yeah. tips and advice you want to continue? Maybe I just want to add some of the point. Uh, sure. Uh, Dr. Aini, uh, nak, nak unshare screen dulu? I think uh, maybe uh, young Expect imperfection, you know, I think one of the, siapa tadi Farid kan, I'm not sure, asking uh, how to stay motivated kan, after rejection and rejection, you know. Because I think this is a common thing, but people don't really see it. Uh, because nobody uh, show how many, how many times she got rejected, you know. So don't, don't give up, you know, the first time, it's always like that, the first time to get through because uh, sometimes the reviewer is just like, you know, he just Google your name like, oh, nothing, nothing is there. And he's just like, okay, this paper is not, he, he start have that feeling, but don't, don't get demoralized or, you know, uh, just stay motivated, uh, try to, uh, you know, try to, uh, try to find the reason, uh, look, search for other advice, you know, so then, you know, so, you, but you expect this imperfection. You cannot say like, I want to publish that, this, like this whole very novel. No, you can't. Because if you want to do that, then you, 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 you will lose uh, motivation. So that's the, you have to expect the imperfection. And then also you have to, uh, why? You do this uh, research. That's another uh, to stay motivation, uh, to stay motivated during. Uh, so uh, because it is hard to look, to stay motivated when you lose sight of your end goal, a common uh, occurrence in research while others are stressed in a daily lab life with you down. So why you in this research in the first place? Perhaps you hope to make real difference through your research. Uh, normally, the young scientists often start out with the ambition to find a cure or unearth a discovery that changed the world, unaware how difficult the path to breakthrough truly is. So remind you why you're working on this project and that everything you do, every step you take is important to serve this purpose so that's another thing but for me i'm just like how i stay motivated in this research i want to be successful so i can buy a lot of legos go to liverpool so that is how i stay motivated in doing research uh other what else you know yeah have a good mentor will help you to stay motivated because or idle you know like you can have a mentor without mentoring. Like you, you look how is his research. Like you know, try to replicate a bit, try to divert a bit. But yeah, it will. This is like a to have like an idola, idol. So then you 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 you'll shape yourself to become like this. You know, and then also always do this SWOT analysis. Uh, SWOT analysis so that you 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 try to have a look what is your strength, what is your weaknesses, what your opportunity and what is your threat. So when you do this, like you know, uh, this is my weaknesses. I'm afraid to talk to people or what. So you have to strategize how 
to tackle this problem. Acknowledge your strength. Oh, my strength is I'm good in writing. So how you want to use? So try to do that. Also will help you to become a, a better researcher. I think that's some of my point. Maybe I'd like to. to Peter to add more on that. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Peter, nak tambah. To be a good researcher, be a good person first. Betul? Do be a good researcher, be a good person first. Be a good researcher, I think just simple advice, do what you love and find your niche. Because I think your niche is very important. It's okay to divert a bit, but still within your own niche. Yeah? Just for instance, for my uh, project, my core is housing studies, but recently I'm looking into vulnerable communities, but still within the housing perspective. I'm not I'm not talking about the human rights perspective and so on and so forth. I'm just looking into the housing perspective, yeah. And also I think be persistent when it comes to research because research is something that very challenging, especially for young researcher. Uh, and but you need to know how to uh, mitigate uh, possible a problem related with, uh, to your research. Eh? Uh, another thing is that, what else? Uh, oh, this is something that I, I always pegang lah in when I, I do my research is that focus on the process rather than outcomes. Eh? Do not think that when you want to do research, you want to publish tier one, tier two, ISI, but focus on the process. Enjoy the journey uh, when you do the research. Yeah, When you talk to people, when you talk to community, enjoy that first and the outcome come later. But of course, you need to publish the outcome, but don't set your mind when you want to get apply for research grant, you want to publish an SI journal article, for instance. So that's why you want to do to get the, the, the research grant. For me, the most important is that enjoy the research, the process of doing it, right? Because as social science, we always talk with a lot of it, uh, community, talk with people. So that, that that's the tagline lah, yang always, I always uh, pegang when I do my research so that, you know, uh, because I love doing it. Lah, yeah? And then uh, most probably I think um, uh, when it comes to research proposal, when you want to submit uh, for apply for research grant, uh, I always, what I always did was I study similar work uh, and article uh, that uh, published by a good journal because from that, you, you will get some idea how to improve your research proposal. That's very important. Yeah? It's kind of like mazhab, right? just follow similar mazhab with, 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 your, with your topic. Yeah? Um, this is the last advice like, from me. Yeah? Be determined uh, in your choice. And then uh, even though you're a young researcher, please take up a role model. I mean, the, the, the role model role, yeah? meaning that you need to lead at some point for your research project, do not underestimate yourself, even though you are a young researcher. There's something inside you that you need to discover, right? Be brave when it comes to presentations. Always defend your idea, but do not defensive. Yeah? I always see that some young researcher, when it comes to defend the idea, sometimes they're over defensive. Yeah? But when uh, but you, you need to know how to, to, to tackle that lah when it comes to presentations. Yeah? Uh, accept other opinions uh, when, when you, you receive comment from reviewer or the, the panel, you might want to embed their comment in your proposal. Because we as a young researcher, we, there's still a lot of things that we, need, we still need to discover. Right? We need still to learn from the young professor. Uh, last but not least, when you do your research, make sure you follow a very good ethic or ethical rule in doing research. That's very important. Nobody will take your research seriously if you do not follow a right or correct um, uh, protocol in doing research, especially in social science. You need to get ethic clearance. You need to know your research methodology and so on and so forth. Make sure you, you, you get that right. Otherwise, people will see your work um, we're not taking your, uh, we not taking your, your work seriously. Yeah, it, it, your methodology is not uh, good, lah. I would say. I think that's all my advice, Dr. Azza. This, this is very limited. My, my limited experience, like I think I believe that there's a lot of senior uh, academician that can give a lot more good, uh, good, good advice to, to everyone, lah. Yeah. Yes, okay, thank, thank you, Dr. Peter. Good tips, starting points for us to ponder upon, and then we open up our minds. 
you know, and start talking to other people. I think the first realization is the most important, the realization that we need to learn. We may come from a background of schooling that is, you know, straight A's, four flat, you know, that's why we are here. That's why we are, you know, we were good students and we we were so, we may be so perfect. It, we don't make mistakes because our education system does not allow us to make mistakes. But when it comes to um, being a researcher as an academician, we must make as much mistakes as possible. And we want to make those mistakes very early in our life. Jangan control sangat semua nak perfect, you know, until at one point, you don't have, you, you are too old to to make mistakes and you, 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 at that is the point when you start to feel that you don't want to make mistakes and you don't want to try anything new. So, I would say this is the time when we just put it all out there, um, learn who you can work with, who you cannot work with. Personally, that is my lesson also, who I can really trust, who I can really work with and I can't, I, I by, by working with them, I realise I can't, I can't continue working with certain um, personalities or certain certain uh, types of um, people. So it, 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 it's a very personal journey for you. And um, uh, Dr. Peter mentioned uh, working as a researcher, you have to put your heart and you have to enjoy it. It's the journey, not the outcome. If you put the ISI as the outcome, as your target, you will be very easy to di be disappointed. But if you put the journey as your outcome, as your learning experience, there's so many good memories and learning, even the negative ones will turn into positive learning experience. And um, someone has mentioned to me very, very early when I just started 2010, I started my, my, my career as a lecturer in UM 2010. Um, that was the time when uh, people wanted Prof. Gulf Jaspoon at the time, paper, 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 you know. So that was the time when um, a lot of people who don't agree with that paper requirement start to leave University of Malaya and, you know, some of us may not have that chance to experience that. But uh, someone really um, I, 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 I look up to right now, and paper is just a byproduct of good research. If your research is good, you, you do it honestly, with integrity, with a lot of passion, you, you go through the method really well, then the, the, pipe, the paper, the ISI, Scopus, or even non-index, it's just a byproduct of that research journey. So um, there's nothing to be um, sorry about, or there's nothing, if, if, it's, if it's worth a Scopus, it's worth a Scopus. That's your best that you have put in. If it's worth a Q1, Alhamdulillah, you, you've managed one, you know, a, a Q1 naturally. Without even, you know, if it, without even trying very hard, you, you, because it was good research in the beginning. So um, I would like to open the floor now. If uh, any one of you would like to ask question directly to the panel, we have half an hour um, time. If you would like to use this opportunity to ask your questions by switching on your camera and uh, we could have a good conversation. I can see a question from Dr. Was it Dr. Farid about the uh, safeguarding, safeguarding your idea from being taken as this. I think this is a worry that young researcher may have. You know, you you are afraid to reveal to my Dr. Farid. Would you like to? I I, I know Dr. Aini has addressed that about the NDA. Before you reveal too much, you can get them to sign an NDA. But yeah, Dr. Farid, would you like to switch on your camera and? post your question or maybe make a comment about this point. Yeah, sorry, my line is not so stable, so probably I won't uh, on okay. my camera if it, it will lag worse. <laughs> okay. uh, so basically the, the question is basically on trying to learn how, how, how exactly do you approach someone and then start the collaborative process, especially with someone external and of higher rank because they can easily be quite predatory given that you are a very young researcher. Mm -hmm. So how do you how do you sort of like slowly 
disclose your idea and and come to the fruition of the collaboration basically so that we we of course will acknowledge their contribution but then we want to draw a line as well so that they don't go beyond that so yeah <laughs> any any of the panels dr aini would you like to start okay all right so uh the part is from my department actually <laughs> So yeah, uh, basically, uh, yeah, I had the same fear as well when I first started to approach uh, researchers from uh, local, other local institution and also uh, uh, international institution. So um, for the first step is uh, usually I would um, uh, attend the talk or at least read their papers and then I would approach them um, to have some comment about their work and then just share like in general what you are doing so that they also notice you that you are also in the loop of uh, research and then um, just make a um, casual start and then from there if let's say if you want to establish um, like right ground together and then that is where when you have uh, built that rapport, then that is where you start to approach in terms of uh, write the proposal and then um, take a step uh, in uh, doing the NDA as well, if you find that that is uh, necessary. For instance, uh, during the uh, PKP last time, I approached this one um, international collaborator uh, to do some uh, material transfer of uh, cell lines. So we have to do the MPA agreement and also non-disclosure agreement. But because of the MCO and so on, the collaboration didn't proceed because uh, it takes a lot of time and then I need to move on from there. But then you can also, from there you can uh, ask them whether they have any other um, researcher that they have collaborated that work on the same area so then you can move on to approach a different group but uh, if you find your area it's too overlap with them so it's best to sign the material uh, the nda to avoid a uh, conflict of interest but this as well um, further advice uh, detailed advice uh, should be given by the uh, research office. So we have a research office in our faculty. So you can always make an appointment with them and then they will advise you further on this. Dr. Nurin, Dr. Peter, do you have any um, suggestion? Any other question? Just, just to, to share some tips, lah, not to particularly um, address the question just now. So how do I actually get contact with others, foreign professor? Yeah? So what I did was, sebelum PKP, whenever I'm traveling to another country, I always Google up the university. If I look at and there is any professor related to when we done, there is set meeting with them during my traveling time just to, mm -hmm. to, to, to catch up copy session. So this is how I introduce myself to the to the to the foreign professor like which after you come back from your traveling and then you need to email them back and saying something nice about their work because you need to create that casual rapport first before you invite them to do your work so that is what i i did lah for the past few years which is for me personally is work because i maintain a quite good relationship with quite many of foreign professors so far lah through that process you know, whenever you're yeah. traveling from Malaysia, okay? just, just contact any of the professors, invite for coffee, chit chat with them. Just a very casual meeting. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so that, that's my advice. Yeah. Make friends. Yeah. Make right, new yeah. research friends. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to add uh, an additional tips is like uh, you ask this, like you have a friend and then you know, like who's like seems like have like people have experience working with others. So you learn from others' experience. You know, you, you can ask around your friends, like, how is she? How is... That's another way to know whether he's a predatory or not. Like, you know, that's another thing. We, you you can you can uh, learn from other experience. Lah. I just want to add on that. Mm, yeah. mm, mm. Ask around. Ask around. Ask around. Uh, yeah. Can I add up? Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, in terms of uh, this is like very, very related to my area. So um, for young researchers, sometimes they have this conference in which um, the number of participants is not that many. Uh, and the conference or the meeting is actually to cater for uh, to initiate uh, collaboration and uh, exchange of ideas. So you have to, uh, that is, this is where you have to subscribe to the society new traineeship portal because you can join this event and it will be more like a, a, a small discussion group about your area of research. So just recently uh, that I mentioned just now, um, I applied for the uh, EACR, so European Association for Cancer Research, um, to attend for a, this small conference in which you, you really need to participate in that event. You need, you need to discuss your idea, you need to discuss with uh, others about their work, and if you do your presentation, you have to defend your work. So try to look up for this uh, sort of event. And I think the interaction will be more like um, closer compared to a bigger conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talking about conference, I, I I have to admit that was my reason of being a lecturer. I want to go to conferences all over the world. I will tick all the countries that I haven't been to. Okay, next is to find a conference in this country. I haven't been. I haven't got a chance to go to South Africa or or the African continent except for Somalia. Yeah. Somalia was a whole different experience. I, I would love to share that, maybe maybe not in this platform. But yes, we all have our own motivation of doing research, and mine was that I love traveling and I love sponsored traveling. <laughs> okay, any other um sharing or any other um comments from the uh, participants? This is your chance. You want to ask anything? Maybe they're shy. They can just. Uh, like you can type it too. You can type it. Dr. Afika, Dr. Eni, Liza, Dr. Aya, Azizi, Dr. Hani is here. Dr. Hani, Dr. Hazrina. Hi. Hello. Dr. Hani, nak tambah apa? -apa? I, I don't have anything more to add. It's just I, I agree with whatever the, the panels have uh, mentioned and I learned a lot from this session. Um, I, I think I'm still considered a young researcher myself. <laughs> so, we are all young. But yeah, I agree that um, we should savor the moment and although it is hard being pandemic this time around, but um, but this session is really uh, needed lah, to keep our enthusiasm going. Otherwise, uh, we may have drifted and lost motivation. So thank you to EDEC for organizing this session. And thank you to the panels for sharing your thoughts. Thank you very much. I want to share that. Uh, I hope the panels don't mind if I share this fact. We actually scheduled this to be much earlier in August. <laughs> See, they are all laughing. <laughs> but. Uh, COVID is real. Actually, our panels themselves are affected by COVID. Siapa positif? Angkat tangan. Masa tu. Yes. Yes. Jadi club COVID. <laughs> our WhatsApp group preparation for this for this uh, forum. We have started long time ago. I think two, three months back. And uh, Alhamdulillah, we managed to do it today. We're very happy that it's finally done. And um, but yeah, the experience of, you know, um, going through COVID, we can feel the pain and the stress that some of you may have gone through and some of you may have lost your family members because of COVID and it just adds up to the challenges of uh, this day. So I hope this uh, session was able to uh, lighten and give lighten you a little bit and give some new perspective, some uh, breath of fresh air for you to take into account different perspective to move forward. Maybe you want to try any of the tips that we offered, any of uh, maybe digest some of the um, principles or advice that uh, the panels have shared. Perhaps that could be a helping point for you guys, for, for all of us. Any other? Um, um, Comments? 
If no, I would like to invite you to go to the chat section and you can see there's a feedback form. Feedback form by... Uh, maybe I get uh, Puan Sharifah to repost. It's from uh, Puan Sharifah Nur Shafika. There's a feedback form. If you could take some time to um, click on the link and fill that up, um, that would be really uh, appreciated by ADAC. Yeah. And uh, once you're done with the feedback form, I would like to invite all of us to switch on our cameras and pose for our mini gathering today. There are a good number of us, a good close-knit um, number of us. Yep, for a photo session. So I, I, I welcome all of you to switch on your camera. Hang on. Okay, there you go. Okay. Uh, yes. I unspotlight everyone first. Okay, boleh. Ah, Dr. Iza, Dr. Dr. E, Dr. E. <laughs> Dr. Hani, thank you for joining us. Dr. Aya, Dr. Saadah yang mana ya? I see a lot of your comment here. Dr. Azizi. Uh, Sharifah boleh tolong tak gambar? Cukup tak? Ada lagi yang belum switch on camera? Okay. Sembilan orang je ke yang dah switch on? Mari, mari. Ambil gambar. Mari, mari. Kenang-kenangan. Cuba Sharifah letak dalam large gallery. Mungkin boleh muat semua. Sorry? Uh, large gallery. Dekat more action tu, letak large gallery. Okay, kejap ya. Okay. Kejap ya. Okay, ready everyone. One, two, three. Alamak, kejap. Uh, blur lah. Blur eh? Haa, uh -uh. kejap ya. Buat large gallery kot. Uh, kat umum boleh kan kat kat sana? Uh, kejap akak try juga. Sebab gallery biasa clear bila large gallery jadi sangat blur. Mm -hmm. Kalau together mode dia ni ke? Together mode. Blur juga eh. Hmm, dekat sini large gallery pun sama macam ni. Um, kami letak dalam gallery, mungkin a few of you boleh snip juga picture and share with us. Kod-kod ada yang tertinggal. Is that okay? Boleh. Alright. Okay, uh, Sharifah just uh, snap je apa yang dekat. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Siapa nak siapa main tu? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, alright. Dah eh? Okay, thank you so much everybody. I would like to formally end the session. Thank you so much to the panels, Dr. Aini, Dr. Dr. Nurin, Dr. Peter. Uh, dan semua yang hadir, Dr. Hani, Dr. Siti Zaleha. Okay, I, I don't want to mention names. That I have to read all the name list. But thank you so much for joining and your input, your comments on the comment section. Um, we meet again when uh, we can work on site and have trainings in ADEC. I hope we can see you in person. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sharifah.